So I'm pretty close with my grandparents. I grew up in Denver, Colorado, and they lived right down the block from me. So while I was growing up, um, my grandmother was a retired teacher and my grandfather was a retired engineer. So I would often go over there so they could help me with my homework or do it for me. They also um, helped when I was 16 to teach me how to drive when my own parents lost their patience. More importantly, they were there for me during the hard times when I was 13 and my parents got divorced. And when I was 18 and my mother, their daughter, passed away. It was during this time that I decided to stay in Colorado for college, mostly so I could be there for them. Looking back on it, I realized they were definitely there for me more than I could have ever been there for them. After college, I moved away. I moved across the country, and I continued to call them every Sunday. Well, needless to say, I was pretty devastated last May when my grandfather passed away. After more than 65 years of marriage, the last thing my grandmother did was give my grandfather a kiss on the forehead and simply say, thank you. May we all be so lucky, right? So last summer, I spent a lot of time worried about my grandma. I increased my weekly calls to two to three times a week, and I could definitely tell that her mental state was diminishing a little bit. Our conversations would repeat. She'd repeat herself over and over again. And I became more worried when a couple months later, she fell and broke her hip and needed a full hip replacement. My sister and I would talk often during this time, and we both started thinking, this is the beginning of the end. And I was really upset because I'm getting married this September, and I really want my grandma to be there, especially since my mom can't. It's something that's really important to me. So I was really surprised when one day I got a phone call from my sister, and she said, Grandma has a boyfriend. Now, granted, this is a woman who just got back into her assisted living facility from re uh, physical therapy. I was surprised. I mean, she had a 24-hour live-in aid at this point. So I was like, my grandma? Well, apparently, my sister had found this out because the assisted living facility had called her. You see, my grandma took this man friend to lunch in her cafeteria and excused the lemonade so she could go upstairs alone with this man. Well, the aide, not quite knowing what to do, went to management, and management promptly busted in on my grandma in her apartment without her shirt on. Get it, grandma? My sister didn't quite have the same reaction, and actually, as she was talking to my grandmother about this incident, she got so frazzled and frustrated that she literally ran into a cement pole in her garage <laughs> and ended the conversation by hanging up on my grandma and saying, maybe you shouldn't be so easy. <laughs> well, I called my grandma to get her side of the story. Hi, grandma. I I hear you have a boyfriend. I do. How old is he? Well, dear, I don't know, because I don't want to tell him my age. <laughs> For the record, my grandma is 88 years old, and her boyfriend is 78. <laughs> Get it, grandma? So it's at this point that I have a health background. All through college, I worked at a women's health clinic, and I have talked to a lot of young, old, everything in between women about their sexual health. So I'm like, I can do this. I need to talk to my grandma about her sex life. <laughs> Say, Grandma, are you exclusive? She says, oh, I don't think so. So then I start telling her things that, you know, I'm using phrases like, 
don't give away the milk for free <laughs> and wrap it up. To which she responds, oh yes, dear, I know, I know. I'm glad someone's telling grandma what's up. I mean, she literally probably has only been with my grandfather. She married him when she was 19 years old, and a lot has changed since then. So I'm glad she's in the know. I was relieved with our conversation. Her relationship continued, and on a Saturday, she invited my family to meet her boyfriend. Well, as usual, I call her on Sunday, and she tells me, I don't think your sister likes my new boyfriend. Well, why, Grandma? Because he's a goy. So for those that don't know, Grandma's new boyfriend is not Jewish. And we are. But I told you that Grandma's mental state is diminishing a little bit these days. And she forgot that the guy that I'm marrying and have been dating for eight years is also a goy. I am so proud of Grandma. I have waited eight years for this. When I started dating my boyfriend, I literally thought my cousin would join me. No, she married a guy from Israel. I thought my sister would join me. No, she married a guy she met on J-Date. I was like, get it, Grandma, it's about time someone sins with me. <laughs> so the relationship progressed, and I kept getting some frustrating calls from my sister. And eventually I got a call from my sister, and she said, your grandma has been caught giving her boyfriend a hand job." in the cafeteria. <laughs> now, my grandma may be many things, but an exhibitionist she is not. She shops at Neiman Marcus. So at this point, I knew something was wrong with grandma, and unfortunately, something is. She was diagnosed with hypersexual dementia, <laughs> which really is a thing and exists between 2 to 17% of seniors. Who knew? But I have to say, if this is how grandma lives out the rest of her days, get it, grandma. Thank you. Yeah.